Let's go one step further. Let's find the standard deviation. It's a little more complicated, and I'll do a little more detail in this one. This is the symbol. This is lowercase sigma, which stands for standard deviation. It can be calculated as following. We're going to do something similar, but have a lot more going on. We're going to start with x, but instead of multiplying x times its probability, we're going to multiply x squared times its probability. And by this I mean I'm going to take every value of x, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, square it, and then multiply it times this corresponding probability. Okay? Then I'm going to, as we did before, let me back up here, I'm going to add all of those products up. Alright? So we have the summation symbol. And to continue the formula for standard deviation, we then have to subtract not the mean, but the square of the mean. So it's mu squared. And I've got to do one more thing. As you might recall from the earlier formula for the mean of just uh, the standard deviation of a set of numbers, at some point we do have to take a square root, and that's what we do it now. We have to take the square root of this whole thing. So this is what sigma is equal to the square root of the summation of the square of every x value times its probability minus the mean squared. Okay? Well, let's go ahead and do that. First of all, if, if the mean mu is 2.702, and if I square that, 2.702 squared is approximately uh, 7.3. Okay? So that's what we'll be subtracting at the very end before we take the square root. All right? So let's actually write down here on the bottom exactly what we would enter in our calculator. Okay? Again, we have to square each of the x values and multiply times that. So on my calculator, I would enter. I'm going to start over here. 0 squared is 0. So it's going to be 0 times 0 0.042 plus, well, 1 squared is 1. 1 times 0 0.109, I'm going to add to that 2 squared, 2 squared is 4, so that's 4 times 0.263, plus 3 squared is 9 times its probability of 0.342, plus 4 squared is 16 times 0.179, let me come over here, plus 5 squared is 25, times this probability of 0 0.065. Well, at that point my ESO fell over and I had to stop things. But I've got the situation under control I think now. So let's continue. We just found that in order to find the standard deviation, we add up the sum and we should get a grand total of approximately 8.728. So what do we have so far? We've got this entire amount here. We have the sum. So let's take this, this whole formula and write it over here. So we've got the standard deviation, sigma, is now, we know, is equal to 8.728 minus mu squared, which we already said is approximately 7.3. All right? We should find that this is equal to the square root of 1.4, 1.428. And when you take the square root of 1.428, you get approximately rounding to one decimal place, one-tenth, because these numbers are all whole numbers. The mean and the standard deviation should be accurate to one decimal place, or nearest tenth. This answer is approximately 1.2. Standard deviation is 1.2. Okay? <clears throat> so now we have the mean. Now we have the standard deviation. And... Please recall that we can now calculate from that. We can calculate uh, a range of normal, usual values. 
of these six values, zero through five, which ones would be considered usual and which one of these events, if you think of an event occurring, would be unusually rare because they are very big or small? Well, let's find that out. Let me find my eraser. And let's get rid of this formula over here, but keep the numbers. Keep the original uh, probability distribution. Okay, we know that to find the range of normal usual values, we start with the mean and goes two standard deviations in either direction. So let's we'll start with the mean, which was 2.7, rounding it to one decimal place. And we're going to go two standard deviations to the right. So we've got standard deviation 1.2, we're going to go plus 1.2 plus another 1.2. And that's going to take me all the way over to, uh, that's 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5.1. That's equal to 5.1. Two standard deviations to the left, we're going to be subtracting 1.2, subtracting another 1.2. And that takes us down to, looks like about 0.3. So my range of normal, usual values we would expect from this specific probability distribution is a range from 0.3 to 5.1. Okay? And if you notice that, that encompasses every one of the x values except one. Zero is less than 0.3. So zero would be considered unusually rare, an event occurring in which we would get a zero. And we can confirm that. can always expect this to be true. In this case, it is. Notice that the probability of zero is less than 5%. We use 5% also as a boundary line for determining whether or not an event is expected to happen or whether its occurrence would be considered unusually rare. Since 0 0.042 is less than 0 0.05, 5%. I know that we've got confirmation that zero would be unusually rare. That concludes our discussion of probability distribution.